in the top stories. National Bank responds to rumors of an alleged hack. Governor General hosts virtual accreditations and National AIDS Secretariat offers free HIV testing. The details on these stories and more after the break. Without limits, happy, free skin you're in with no party. Want to seize the day? Grab a letter B. Live, love, be. Angus to a lemon, lime and bitters. Live, love, be. In your formative years, we were there. When you got the good news and the bad, we were right there with you. Through all your great adventures, we were always right by your side. Now that life has thrown us a curveball, we are still here. And as we navigate this difficult period, the SKCCU will continue to be there for you and your family to help you through. We will assist you in safely and efficiently accessing your funds through our digital platforms, online banking, mobile banking, ATMs, and even our drive-through services. We can get through this together with responsible financial decisions by making food and medication a priority, practicing proper hygiene, maintaining social distancing, and constant prayer. We are here for you. We are still here. We will get through this together. SKCCU will continue to be your financial partner for life. Ease the squeeze with Digicel. Win a thousand dollars in groceries monthly. Get your chance when you activate any Digicel Prime Bundle. Pay your bill in full. Sign up for a new postpaid or home entertainment package, or simply just join the Digicel family. It's that simple. Be one of four lucky winners selected every month from January to March to participate in our Ease the Squeeze shopping sweepstakes. Digicel gives you more, so you can ease the squeeze. Did you sell better together? Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 Newscast. I'm Carla Berridge. The St. Chris Nevis Anguilla National Bank has responded to rumors of a hacking incident at the bank following the interruption of services on Thursday into Friday. CEO of National Bank Donald Thompson said an investigation is underway into an IT security incident that has caused the service interruption. As soon as we became aware of the issue, we launched an urgent ongoing investigation. This is progressing as an absolute priority and we are working diligently to get all our systems back online and to restore our normal level of service as soon as possible. Although not directly addressing the rumor of the bank being hacked, Mr. Thompson said all funds at the bank are secure. Mr. Thompson used the opportunity to invite customers to utilize the bank's ATMs or the 1,300 point-of-sales machines across the island to access funds and complete electronic transactions. On Friday, the bank extended opening hours until 5 p.m. to allow customers more time to do business. The following is a press release from Government House. On Wednesday, 10th February and Thursday, 11th February at Government House in Kitts, his Excellency Sir S. W. Tapley Seaton, GCMG, CVO QCJP, conducted virtual accreditation ceremonies for nine ambassadors accredited to the Federation by their countries. On Wednesday, the countries and their respective ambassadors were as follows. 
the Republic of Turkey, Ambassador Her Excellency Yeshim Kebabciolo, the Federal Republic of Germany, Ambassador Her Excellency Jutta Kernig, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Ambassador His Excellency Sandor Mannix, Raphael Vaga van Kibet, and Mac Falva, the Czech Republic, Ambassador Her Excellency Katerina Lukasova, and Republic of France, Ambassador His Excellency Jack Henri Earl. On Thursday, the following four countries participated. The Portuguese Republic, Ambassador His Excellency Carlos Amoro. The Federal Republic of Ethiopia, His Excellency Shibru Mamokedida. The Kingdom of Belgium, Ambassador His Excellency Huba Verbeest. And the European Union, Ambassador Her Excellency Malga Chota Vasilevka. In all of these instances, the Governor General engaged the ambassadors in discussions of the areas of mutual interest and solicited assistance in further provision of scholarships and other educational assistance. His Excellency wishes to record the appreciation for the professionalism of ZIZ staff who provided the Zoom facility and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs staff and his staff for their excellent coordination. Ahead of Valentine's Day on Sunday, the National AIDS Secretariat invited persons to know their status by conducting free rapid HIV tests at Independence Square on Friday. Cheney Kavi has more. Operation Safe Streets, Safe Sheets. That's what the National AIDS Secretariat is calling their campaign to have persons earn their lover's license to practice safe sex. The Secretariat took over Independence Square on Friday to give persons that opportunity to get tested for HIV. National HIV AIDS Program Coordinator in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Matthias Offer, explained that this campaign allows for the Secretariat to educate persons about HIV. Here we have in a rapid testing day you know uh, it's, a, it's a campaign to involve people and drag the, 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 the residents and also citizens of the Federation to come out and do the rapid test and get to, to know their status and it's also an avenue for us to make people aware and educated about what HIV is and what it has to how it affects and the pros and the cons about HIV he said the testing is done in a four-step process with the first step centered on HIV education the first thing we do we, we get we, we have a section where people are asked to sit down we educate the people about what the test about what uh, um, HIV is about give them a preamble a little bit of what the test is about and what we're doing here and why they should get the test done and then after the stage we move them to the testing site we then take Individually, we take people to the testing site where they can then do the test and then we move from the testing site and after you get the result, then you move to a place where you'll be certified, given the driver's, the, the, the rider's license. The license license will be, will have the result there and then we'll be certified. And then we have, then you can move to the next section where you can get your gifts and, you know, for the top-ups, the, the top-ups we're giving out as well as and the, the free t-shirts, the free uh, condoms and some so other things that we have given out. He also explained the procedure for someone who may have tested positive. We have trained counselors. We actually take those persons. We have the, you know, we take those persons, start educating them on what the next step to go, and then we guide them properly on how to move forward on start getting, you know, get doing another test basically because this we need a confirmation test. And that confirmation test will give us a go ahead on how to uh, start the treatment with you and put you on the right path and understand that we are with you. You're not alone. We are with you and we're here to help you understand that come. It's not a death sentence, but it's just a virus that can be managed just as any other chronic disease. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, to ensure the safety of the testing officers, he said they were all given face masks, hand sanitizers, and hand swabs, and the persons coming for testing were asked to put on a face mask. Dr. Offer said initiatives such as these help the people of the Federation to know their status, and that will also mitigate the spread and the transmission of the virus. Reporting for ZIZ News, I am Shanique Carvey. In other national news, according to the Financial Times, the World Health Organization's Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization has stated that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine can be used by all adults, even the elderly worldwide. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws reported this during her presentation at the National Emergency Operations Center press briefing on February 10th. The vaccine could be used by all people over the age of 18 years in all countries. The WHO recommends an interval um, 
of about 8 to 12 weeks between the doses. It has been shown that the two-dose efficacy and immunogenicity increase with a longer interdose interval. Preliminary evidence uh, on this vaccine, the one that we are expecting, expecting through the COVAX facility, uh, it shows uh, that it's effective against the variant identi first identified in the United Kingdom. So that's good news. The chief medical officer added that the Oxford University and AstraZeneca have said that they expect this vaccine to protect against the more severe disease and death caused by the variant that was first identified in South Africa. This is also uh, reassuring because preliminary data a few days ago found that from a trial that was conducted in South Africa last week that the vaccine had reduced efficacy against mild and moderate disease caused by the variant first identified in South Africa. So what they are saying is that it provides you protection against severe, moderate to severe disease. Dr. Lars said that the WHO is expected to issue an emergency use listing for this vaccine as early as Monday, February 15th. After the break, immigration officers sport new uniforms and Minister Powell participates in OECS 6th Council of Ministers Education Meeting. Stay with us. There is no better time to discover what your National Bank Visa debit or black cards can do. Mimi, what's that song? can get you out of a pickle. Using my National Bank Visa card is fast, secure, and convenient. Cashless Eska N is our new lifestyle choice. National Bank, always here. Horseworth Building and Neiman Centers are making learning garden easy. Hey. Come to Horseworth Building and Neiman Center now and get 25% off school-wide on our entire lawn and garden department. Yes! For the months of February and March, Horseworth Building Center and Neiman Center is making improving your lawn and garden easy. 25% off all garden supplies, garden equipment, garden accessories, including weed eaters, lawnmowers, and much more. Get 25% off all lawn and garden items happening now at Horseworth Building Center in St. Kitts and Nevis. Horseworth Building and Nevis Centers, making home improvement easy. For an exciting year with Flow Broadband and TV connecting you at home. Sign up now and get a free Samsung tablet worth over nine hundred dollars. Up to one hundred megabits per second blazing internet will keep everyone on top of everything every day. While Flow TV delivers the best home entertainment with the latest shows on demand in HD plus favorites you can record. Visit your nearest Flow store today to sign up for Flow Broadband. And TV and get your free Samsung tablet. Conditions apply. Welcome back. The Immigration Department completed its introduction of new uniforms across the Federation this week as part of efforts to mold its identity as an independent institution. Immigration officers in St. Kitts and Nevis turned out to work smartly dressed, donning the new blue button-down tops and dark gray bottoms with shoulder straps that display one, two or three bars depending on the officer's rank. The Immigration Department previously fell under the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. It was made a separate entity in July 2018, with former Assistant Commissioner of Police Marceline Hughes at the helm as the first ever Chief Immigration Officer. Since that time, under her leadership, steps have been taken to shape the image of the department. A logo was created and social media platforms, in addition to a web page, are being developed. The new uniforms are the latest step towards achieving this goal. Ms. Hughes registered her how pleased she was to see the immigration officers sporting the new uniforms. 
I think this uniform makes us look more like the law enforcing body that we are. With officers posted around the Federation at ports of entry, they help to create the first impression visitors get of the country. So it is important that they look the part, in addition to being professionals on the job. We also want to be a body that nationals can take pride in because of the way we present ourselves. Deputy Immigration Officer Jacqueline Brown was assigned to the department for several years prior to its separation. Formerly an inspector of police, she said she's excited about the changes being made. I think that with the new look, the team feels re-energized, reinvigorated and motivated to carry out our mission, which is to provide an efficient and professional service to all arriving and departing our ports to prevent illegal entry of persons and to liaise with local, regional and international agencies and to be seen to be discharging or function in a courteous and friendly manner. The officers gave the new uniforms their nod of approval and disclosed that they were thrilled with the direction of the department. The sixth annual meeting of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, Council of Ministers Education, was convened on February 4th and 5th. At the virtual meeting, Minister of Education, Honorable John L. Powell, in his capacity as 2020 Chair of the Council, conferred the role to his successor, Honorable Dr. Gail T.C. Wickobert, Minister of Education in St. Lucia. Discussions were framed by the COVID-19 conditions and the debilitating effect on the education system. Despite that effect, the resilience of the OECS education system was highlighted with evidence of some of the success to the response to COVID-19 in education. Some interventions by ministries of education included food programs for vulnerable students, sanitization kits, print packages for home learning, and the provision of more than 15,000 devices across the region for students and teachers to connect with online learning. The OECS ministers expressed their appreciation for the technical and financial support received from the GPE, totaling U.S. $5.3 million to date, and agreed to individually and collectively add their voices to the GPE's Raise Your Hand pledging appeal for increased funding for education by donor partners. The St. Lucia Ministry of Education hosted the meeting under the theme Sustainable Education, Collaborative Policies and Practices for the Future. Understanding that tertiary level education makes one of the greatest contributions to the Federation's overall growth and development, the Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris-led Team Unity Administration remains resolute in its commitment to assist its citizens and residents to pursue and achieve a higher education. Prime Minister Harris gave this reassurance when he addressed the Ross University School of Veterinary Medicine Scholarship Award Ceremony on Wednesday. At that ceremony, students of the CFBC and the Neva Sixth Form College were presented with scholarships to continue their educational journey. Education is, in fact, the true essence of people's empowerment. The ability of a good education to lift people up and inspire those around them should never be underestimated. The Prime Minister stated that everyone, regardless of their circumstances, should be able to access a high-quality education. For this reason, my government has directly supported hundreds of students with the economic costs and other fees payable to universities such as the University of the West Indies, the University of the Virgin Islands, Monroe, and other institutions around the world. These beneficiaries include our national scholars and runners-up teachers and other civil servants and persons drawn from the broader community and from the private and other areas of the public sector service. Over the last five years, the Team Unity Administration invested over $50 million in the tertiary level education of hundreds of persons, including 50 teachers pursuing their master's degree. 
$10 million was budgeted for 2021 to help defray economic and other costs of students' participation in tertiary level training at the University of the West Indies, UWE, the University of the Virgin Islands, UVI, Monroe College, and others. And finally, on the local scene, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris was among those to pay tribute to the late Apostle Dr. Alan Isaac, founder and apostle of the Rivers of Living Water Christian Center, at his homegoing service held on Thursday. The Prime Minister joined the congregation to celebrate the life and work of the servant leader, who, through his many outreach programs, had touched the lives of many individuals across the Federation. As an evangelist, he loved crusades. He hosted many conferences and outreach to the young people, the men, the women, the married couples, with well-organized seminars and workshops. He engaged in monthly hospital and prison ministry. He tried hard to win souls to God, recognizing that life without God would be empty and bitter in the end. The reason death of his evangelism and ministry was to save souls. Dr. Harris said, quote, Apostle Dr. Alan Samuel Isaac has made a tremendous contribution to the advancement of the kingdom of God and our nation. He nurtured, inspired, and empowered our people to live and reach for more in life. He taught us to reach for more in our relationship with God, in education, in our careers, in our marriages, and family relationships. The number one thing is always seeing life change, to see someone trans transition from the kingdom of darkness into God's kingdom. That's my greatest joy, he would often say. Dr. Isaac had a 48-year preaching career, 20 of which he served as a pastor in the Wesleyan Holiness Church up until 1991. On August 13, 1995, Reverend Isaac, along with his wife Debbie, founded the Rivers of Living Water Christian Center. Coming up in regional news, illegal abortion may be doing harm to Jamaica's economy. The details when we come back. Heavy power up in February at Hortsfoot's Value Mart IGA. Yes, in February, we are giving you three ways to power up. One, power up your Value Club points in February. Yes, for the first time ever, every Value Club customer will earn double points on all Value Club purchases at Value Mart in St. Kitts and Evans. Two, power up in our power play, where lucky customers win their purchases free. Three, power up your savings with the Hortsfoot's Hortsfoot's Value Mart Red Tag Value Deals. Yes, power up the savings with huge discounts on select Value Deals items. So, power up your points with double points on all Value Club purchases. Power up your savings with rock bottom prices on our new Red Tag Value Deals. And be a lucky customer to win your purchases free in our Power Play. Power up in February at Hortsfoot's Value Mart IGA. Don't miss it. Terms and conditions are fine. There is nothing good about you. I don't want to be here. My father told me that as far as he was concerned, I could stay in the home forever. Our children deserve a chance for change. Children make mistakes, and child justice reform can help everyone to address these mistakes appropriately. Instead of sending a child to adult prison, let us give them alternative sentencing. We must divert our children from the court system through a holistic and systematic approach to addressing their offense and their road to rehabilitation. Rehabilitation helps child offenders to grow, change, learn from mistakes, accept responsibility, and make better choices. Reintegration of child offenders into the community after rehabilitation benefits the child, the family, and the community with a more productive citizen. Join the movement to give our children a chance for change. This message is brought to you by the USAID OECS Juvenile Justice Reform Project 2, funded by the United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to OECS.org forward slash JJRP.
And we're moving now to news on the regional scene. The Caribbean Policy Research Institute, CAPFI, has revealed that taxpayers in Jamaica pay U.S. $1.4 million yearly to fund the health system struggle with illegal and unsafe abortions. These new numbers could provoke the government even more to review the acts which criminalize abortion. Here's Mark. Over 22,000 pregnancies are said to have been illegally terminated throughout the island, according to the Caribbean Policy Research Institute, CAPRI. Though 22,000 are recorded, it is said that the numbers are far greater. These illegal terminations are said to be costing the taxpayers of Jamaica 1.4 million U.S. dollars yearly to aid the health system treat complications of botched abortions. Dr. Leon Levers, Director of Advocacy at Capri, says sometimes regardless of an attempt to abort the child, the child may still survive but with complications and ultimately relies on the health care system. Because disproportionately poorer and younger women are accessing illegal abortions, their likelihood of being dependent on the public health care system is increased. Lever says according to their research, countries that legalize abortion tend to spend less taxes on health care systems because the procedure is done with care and diligence by professionals. In addition to the fact that those countries that have legalized abortion, we've also noted that experience lower rates of crime, lower rates of dependence on state care in terms of children becoming wards of the state. With me, I was in my final year of school when I got pregnant for a second time and I don't want I didn't want to be held back. I didn't want to fall behind or anything so I need a choice to do it and I knew it was illegal and it was wrong, but I went ahead and did it anyway. It could have been a bit badly for me but I was one of the lucky persons who did it. Juliet Cuthbert Finn, State Minister of Health responsible for maternal health, continues to lobby for the repealment of Sections 72 and 73 of the Offences Against the Persons Act. People are still being arrested if they have been found that they, whether it's a woman, as I said, or the doctor, for any abortion because it is illegal. We need to get that off our books. We need to give the woman a choice. Paige Dixon, CVM Live. Several youth leaders are demanding that government act on behalf of citizens and regularize the use of pepper spray for women in Trinidad. The comment comes just days after Agriculture Minister Clarence Rambarat warned in the parliament that although it was being considered by the National Security Council, it could be deadlier, deadlier than a firearm in the wrong hands. Sunil Lala reports. Former independent Senator Nikolai Edwards rallied several youth advocates calling for the protection of women to be given a priority. He claims that while the country is reeling from the recent murder of Andrea Barath, a tit for tat is playing out in the parliament as to who is responsible for crime. Mr. Edwards is demanding an end to party politics and wants both the PNM and UNC to work together to ensure women once again feel safe in this country. He also wants government to accede to the request from women to be given pepper spray to have a fighting chance of survival. And if it is found that these tools may also pose a threat to women themselves, then we need to properly regulate its use. But to leave it in abeyance is saying to women that you simply do not care. Mr. Edwards was also critical of the opposition for wasting parliamentary time by bringing a motion of no confidence against National Security Minister Stuart Young. The opposition knew fully well that that motion would have been defeated because they do not have the majority for that motion to pass. But instead, the opposition chose to waste our parliamentary time to debate a matter that for many citizens is an abject thought. Meanwhile, Ariel Saunders, who unsuccessfully contested a Hindustan St. Mary's seat 
in January's local government by election, criticized both the government and opposition for continuing to play politics while the nation grieves. In our darkest hour, the 41 members of parliament whom we have entrusted and elected to represent us and make the necessary legislative changes continue to play games, scoring cheap political points. But on this occasion, they will not be let off that easily. Both men believe the current crime situation needs strong leadership from both governments and opposition and urge for unity in the parliament. Must we continue to be unified in nothing but our grief? Sonolala, TTT News. Coming up, prosecutors urge state to convict Trump. We'll tell you more when we come back. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. Welcome back. Democratic impeachment managers have wrapped up their case against Donald Trump. They spent two days laying out what they describe as overwhelming evidence that the former U.S. president incited January's deadly insurrection on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. There was no dramatic video from the impeachment managers on Thursday. Instead, there was a warning. Donald Trump had a history of political violence, and if he wasn't convicted, then there would inevitably be more. The attack was done for Donald Trump at his instructions and to fulfill his wishes. Donald Trump had sent them there. We love him. We love you, bro. No, he'll be happy. What do you mean? We're fighting for Trump. All of these people who've been arrested and charged, they're being accountable, held accountable for their actions. Their leader, the man who incited them, must be held accountable as well. If we don't draw the line here, what's next? What makes you think the nightmare with Donald Trump and his lawmaking and violent mobs is over? If we let him get away with it, and then it comes to your state capital, or it comes back here again? Is there any political leader in this room who believes that if he is ever allowed by the Senate to get back into the Oval Office, Donald Trump would stop inciting violence to get his way? Would you bet the lives of more police officers on that? I'm not afraid of Donald Trump running again in four years. I'm afraid he's going to run again and lose, because he can do this again. The Democratic impeachment managers quoted extensively from Republicans who had blamed, criticized, and condemned Donald Trump for what happened here on Capitol Hill on January the 6th. A clear message to the Republican senators now sitting in judgment. Impeachment is not to punish, but to prevent. We are not here to punish Donald Trump. We are here to prevent the seeds of hatred that he planted from bearing any more fruit. Many of the insurrectionists that President Trump incited to invade this chamber were dangerous. People on the FBI watch list, violent extremists, white supremacists. Oh, go over your paycheck! F you guys! You can't even call yourself American! I challenge you all to think about it. If you think this is not impeachable, what is? What would be? President Trump's lawyers endorse his breathtaking assertion that his conduct in inciting these events was totally appropriate, and the Senate acquits Donald Trump, then any president could incite and provoke insurrectionary violence against us again. If you don't find this a high crime and misdemeanor today, you have set a new terrible standard for presidential misconduct in the United States of America. 
Donald Trump's defence team will now take about less than half the time allowed to present its defence, convinced it has the votes to stop the conviction of Donald Trump on the charge of high crimes and misdemeanours. Protesters in Myanmar have held their seventh day of rallies against this month's military coup. The protests came as the military, which overthrew the democratically elected government in the February 1st coup, released more than 23,000 prisoners as part of an amnesty. Al Jazeera's Scott Heidler reports. As they tap their creativity for the marches for a seventh straight day, the anti-coup protesters across Myanmar continue with their movement, calling for the return of democracy and the release of their civilian leaders. We are asking international football fans on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to save our country and share what is happening in Myanmar. And not just Premier League football fans in Yangon. In the eastern city of Muamin, police broke up a protest arresting several people. For the last few nights, security forces have rounded up people who have taken part in the growing civil disobedience movement. And as Myanmar's military celebrated Union Day in the capital, which marks the anniversary of the nation's independence, Facebook announced it would reduce the distribution of all content and profiles run by the military. The move is not a ban, but to lower the number of people who see their content. The social media giant saying the military has continued to spread misinformation. And there's growing concern about a cyber bill proposed by the junta. The military says its new laws are to protect the public and prevent crimes that could harm the country's stability. Freedom of expression advocates see it as an unprecedented censorship. And this is sort of a page out of the authoritarian playbook. You define something so broadly that it can mean anything, and then you can charge anyone. And nine times out of ten, that's going to be a, a government critic or an activist. So we're really worried that this law will be pushed through and then will be used to suppress uh, criticism of the military or resistance to the military coup. Also marking the Union Day holiday, the junta announced a prisoner amnesty. More than 23,000 prisoners were released. The military leaders say the move was to establish a new democratic state with peace, development and discipline. Protesters are concerned that part of the reason for the release is to make room in the prisons, possibly for more political detainees. Scott Heidler, Al Jazeera. Up next in sports, SKNFA profiles St. Paul's FC and basketball action continues. Stay with us. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI.
Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. To keep away the flu, there is one thing we must do. Wash our hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. First up in sports, as fans await the start of the SKNFA Premier League, the Football Association will profile the teams in the nation's top flight football. The first of those features is the SL Hossford's St. Paul's FC. The 2019-2020 football season ended on a high note in December 2020. Despite an almost seven-month break in the season due to the COVID-19 lockdown and restrictions across the Federation, the season resumed in September and moved into the inaugural Super 6 playoffs in late November. Fast forward to December when the SL Horset St. Paul's FC lifted the much-coveted Premier League title. In the lead-up to the start of the 2021 football season, we'll be profiling the teams in the Premier League and what we can expect from them this year. We begin with the Premier League champions, St. Paul's FC. St. Paul's FC won the fifth Premier League title in December. For some fans, this may not be a surprise considering that St. Paul's is a perennial playoff contender and has a wealth of experience mixed with some youthful agility. But in a season when Ransville superstars were red hot coming off a botched season the year before, most probably felt the title was Villages to lose. But St. Paul's probably would not have ascended to the top had it not been for this man, Keith Roy Freeman. Heads go up in the back of the net, St. Paul's! St. Paul's! Freeman, it looks like. But Freeman is free. You don't want Freeman free. He gets the only player. He bangs it at goal. He hands it in the back of the net. Freeman! Superman! Goal! Freeman had a monster season. He won the most Man of the Match awards in the playoffs the MVP for the playoffs, he was the Golden Boot winner for the regular season and the highest goal scorer in the inaugural Super 6 playoffs. It's no wonder his coach Iroy Kunga Jeffers sang his praises. He's just a genius right now, the man on top, so we have to give him the freeze right now. Football analyst LaShawn Dixon of the St. Kitts Nevis Observer pointed to the importance of Freeman to the St. Paul's team. He was by fan, by fan, why did the best player in the Premier Division last season? He, he, he scored goals. He set up goals. He led, he, he led his team from the front. He led his team in performances, and I, I, for me, um, those, those, those awards were, were definitely um, deserved. He seemed like a man possessed and a man willing to, to put his body on the line to, to for, for. For SLR St. Paul's, and it it, it definitely um, brings brings up the question: Why is he not in the national team? Or will he be in the next national team for the World Cup qualifiers? But based on his performances, he ought to to, to be, in my opinion. The season St. Paul's had was a phenomenal one, winning the FA Cup along the way. This was due to their defensive strengths and their prowess going forward. Key to their title defense would be keeping the core they have while strengthening by adding other players. A major transfer rumor suggests that Vince Roy Nelson of Kaon will be joining St. Paul's. If that is true, he will add much needed firepower to support Freeman, making them an unstoppable force. So if they could pay the top two strikers in the Premier Division in, uh, on the same team, I think it's a dangerous um, um, combination for, for, for the rest of the league. SL Horsewoods and Pauls, a team to look out for in the 2021 SKNFA Premier League football season. The Under-20 Junior Basketball League continued this week with three games over the past two days. On Wednesday, Rams Fruta Falcons defeated Rams Hitters 85-80 to in a very exciting game. Falcons was led by game MVP Garfield Hodge with 29 points, 15 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 steals, 3 blocks. He was assisted by Jalen Leader with 13 points, 24 rebounds, Kijan Bori 12 points, 3 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and DeQuante Fraser 2, 9 points, 15 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals. For hitters, Cado Strawn made 23 points, 20 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, 
Laquandre Laurie, 20 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 steals, and Saeed Richardson, 9 points, 13 rebounds. The league continued on Thursday with two games. In the first game, Dynamic Ballers defeated ASC Wolfpack 75-70. For Ballers, Tyreek Freeman game MVP, 17 points, 19 rebounds, 6 assists, 4 steals, 3 blocks. Kevon Huggins, 29 points, 5 assists, 2 blocks. And Kejano Williams, 7 points, 14 rebounds, 8 assists, 4 steals, and 2 blocks. For Wolfpack, Joseph Connolly made 53 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, 5 steals. And Amazir Morris, 2 points, 14 rebounds, and 4 steals. In the second game, defending champs Bird Rock Uprisers defeated ASCJ Hawks 108-105 in a very close game. Bird Rock was led by game MVP Cecil Angel with 50 points, 27 rebounds, 8 assists, and 4 steals. Luis Amparo, 33 points, 18 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks. And Tivari Herbert, 11 points, 56 rebounds, 12 assists, 8 steals, 3 blocks. For Jayhawks, Zendai Richards made 45 points, 31 rebounds, 8 assists, 3 steals, 4 blocks. Aaron Wilkinson, 29 points, 19 rebounds, 7 assists. And Trent James, 2 points, 2, 24 rebounds, 4 assists, and 5 blocks. The league continues on Saturday with two games. At 6 p.m., Rams Futa Falcons vs. Dynamic Ballers. Then at 7, Rams Hitters vs. Bird Rock Uprisers. And that's it for sports. When we come back, we'll have another look at the stories that made the headlines. <music> And now for a recap of the top stories. National Bank responds to rumors of an alleged hack. Governor General hosts virtual accreditations. And National AIDS Secretariat offers free HIV testing. And that's the end of the Zaraiza Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Verge. Goodbye.